know what that sound means. It's time for a little Pacific Indians chatter on the Pacific Sports Network. We're back. Yep. Joined in studio with my co-host, Scott Brown, our student correspondent, Charlie Meyer. I am Cody Kelly. Let's jump right in because we had a busy week this week. We're kind of fighting the rain again. Let's go out to our Riverbend Roundup where we started off every week. Track team has a couple big meets left last night. We heard them up on the hill, I think an 18 meet for the middle schoolers. They ran in their divisions last night. They divided them up, seventh grade boys, eighth grade boys, and then the girls were divided up as well. Their seventh grade boys, excellent, excellent performance. Finished second overall last night. A couple of the standouts, Logan Hoffman was first in the 400. He was third in the 200 meter dash. He also finished first in the triple jump. Great job, Logan. Rowan Herman uh, took second in the 100. He won the high jump, and I believe it was his first time competing in the high jump. Second in the 200 and third in the 400. So a big meet for our basketball guy, Rowan Herman. The eighth grade boys took third overall um, last night at the meet. Uh, standout Ben Smith had a big night. Um, ben was first in the mile, first in the 800. And he was first in the 4x8 team, which included Dominic Burnell, Parker Thomas, and Grant Orris. So congrats to Ben. Congrats to the 8th grade boys on a good showing. Yeah, congratulations to them. As we jump over to the girls' side of the event, the 7th grade girls finished 4th overall. Maddie Rush, 1st in the 100-meter hurdles and 3rd in the 200-meter hurdles. Or maybe just 200. 200. 200. Elizabeth Jenkins, 3rd in the pole vault. And then the 8th grade girls, second overall, Ariana Edmonds, first in the 100 hurdles and first in the 100. Grace Dreyer, first in the 1600, first in the 800, second 4x4. Four four. Alana Reeder, third in high jump and third in the 400. So I would say the track team had a pretty successful night, kind of battled a little bit of the weather as we did too down the baseball field. It just kind of rained off and on all night. Late night, I know there were some tired people this morning, but it seemed like a successful event. Sure was. Now, as we head up to 425 Indian Warpath, before we jump into the sports for the week, let's take us over to the new segment, the hot seat, and let's find out who's on the hot seat this week. Weston Kulik joining us this week on the hot seat, the new segment here. Near perfect Weston Kulik, we should say. Coming just one out short of a perfect game this week. Weston, you ready to do the hot seat? Uh, I think so, yeah. Okay, here we go. Batman or Superman? Batman. Chocolate or vanilla? Uh, chocolate. Super speed or super strength? Super strength. More doors or wheels? Definitely wheels. Pizza or tacos? Pizza. TikTok or Instagram? TikTok. Halloween or Thanksgiving? Halloween. Dog or cat? Dog. Hitting fastball or curveball? Definitely cur fastball. Throwing fastball or curveball? Definitely curveball. Which nickname? Biscuit or weasel? Oh, uh, biscuit. Biscuit. There we go. We got a new nickname. <laughs> Thank you. That was Weston Cole joining us on the hot seat. And then now we're back from the hot seat. That was a little fun segment there again. We're trying to introduce that every week. Uh, let's jump into soccer. Soccer played a couple games this week in the Blue Cat Tournament, that's a combo tournament between Union and Washington. Uh, the Varsity lost to Union 2-0, and then the next night they played 4-2 Malt West and lost 4-0. Their consolation game, which was scheduled for Friday night, tonight was uh, rained out. So nothing tonight? Nothing tonight. Hmm. Tough, uh, they're in a tough bracket, I know. Yeah, it was a tough bracket. Charlie, you want to give us a little rundown on track? Yeah, the Varsity track team went to Herman on Tuesday and faced uh, 15 teams most of which we haven't seen before. The boys placed eighth and the girls placed fourth. We didn't have rain for once, which was pretty nice. We took home a good amount of medals uh, this week, including Satch Wolf took second in the 110 hurdles. Nick Hunkins brought home the fourth, play, or fourth place with a new PR. Um, Colin Haley placed second in the 800 with a new PR and fifth in long jump. The boys, four by four, got a medal, Lexi Lay. Got first in 100 hurdles, 300 hurdles, and placed fourth in the long jump. Holia Haddocks placed fourth in the 100-meter dash. The girls 4x2 placed fourth. 
Liberty Blackburn plays fourth in the high jump and fifth in the triple jump. Molly Pritchard plays second in shot put. And the girls' thirds relay took third. Um, we go to Owensville on Monday for conference. Big conference meet all day on Monday at Owensville. Uh, let's take it over to the golf. The golf team finished up the conference tournament um, Monday. I think it was out of Merrimack Lakes. They finished fourth as a team. Uh, big, big, big performance from freshman Zach Kowser, who shot an 85 and ended up taking fifth in the conference meet, which was – that's a super result for him. Connor Bartell um, ended up in eighth place. He shot a 90. And Connor Bartell, with his scoring average and place in the conference tournament, ended up – receiving a second-team all-conference uh, vote from the coaches. So congrats to Connor. Then um, yesterday they were at the St. James tournament. They finished fourth as a team. And Bo Anderson shot a 91 to lead the Indians at St. James. But they did get a little bit of golf in this week. Yeah, it's nice to see them actually get to play a little golf. Uh, Zach Hauser with the big 85 kind of runs in his uh, blood there to be able to play golf. Yeah, I talked to his dad the other night. And um, he, he's real excited to, to be swinging the clubs this year and didn't know if he was going to play baseball or not, but sounds like he's got some talent. Yeah, and speaking of baseball, now let's jump over to baseball. We had three games this week. Varsity played at DeBerg on Tuesday night. It was a three-inning affair with the Indians getting a 16-0 win. Jay Collier faced nine batters, struck out all nine. Trevor Clun with three hits, Weston Kulik two hits, Matt Rinke three hits and four RBIs. So that nine batters face nine Ks also equals perfect game for Jake Collier. No hitter, perfect game. Do you think, uh, as of right now, a state record? Since I, the I 15 mean, and three has just been adapted? The only way uh, it could be better is if there's a drop third in there or something. So, I mean, I know mm -hmm. we talked about Josh Moore had Pacific's like record for strikeouts in a short game, but his was over six innings. So I don't know how you really decide who has that as far as the school goes, but I guess Jake had a strikeout rate of 100%, so I would give it to him. Yeah, that, that might get in there. <laughs> uh, then on uh, Wednesday night, Varsity took a 6-3 to loss to Parkway West. Parkway West comes in as a big 6A team, uh, coached by former Dutchman Andrew Jett. This is a tough night, a little shaky out of the gates. Defense wasn't really ready to go. It looked like maybe some nerves. And the uh, Indians dropped that one and moved to 13-2. and two. Yeah, we we need big games, and I think Coach Reed tried to explain that after the game to the guys. We got to challenge you. You know, we, we need to challenge you, and you've got to be comfortable being uncomfortable. And in some of these games, we bring in these these big teams we're trying to get on the schedule, and next year I think our schedule is going to look a little different. We're going to have – to do exactly that, and it was a good game for us. Yeah, and then we got the bounce back, though, on senior night on Thursday night with two seniors leaving the program, Kurt Carter Myers and Dylan Mooney. A varsity picked up a 12 to nothing win over St. James. Weston Kulik with five innings, shut out seven Ks, one hitter, lost the perfect game on the last hitter, four and two-thirds, perfect baseball. Aiden Biedenstein <laughs> jumped in with two hits and three RBIs. Ethan Brocher had a big triple. He's batting now 533 on the year. And then the JV action. JV, we are rolling. Um, nine out of our last ten. We had a 12 nothing win over St. James. The Connors took care of business. Mooney and Bollinger on the mound combined to pitch five innings. They only gave up one hit, and that was in the last inning. They didn't walk anyone, and don't believe we had an error. I think we had a perfect game rolling until the fifth inning as well before we lost it on a base hit down the line. Noah Carrico, two hits on the night. And Mooney, Connor Mooney, that is, continues to hammer the baseball, pushing his JV average for the season up near 600. Trey Kulik had a double as well. Good night for the JV Indians. And the freshmen also on Wednesday night after the Parkway West game got their chance to play St. James and picked up a 12-1 to win that night as well. So all three teams put 12 runs up across the board there. Consistent. Uh, Consistent. James Imus with four innings pitch, four Ks, one run for the win. Austin Covert, two for two, four RBIs, on base three times. And Hagen Hassel continues to be a wall behind the plate as far as being the catcher. He was also one for two with an RBI and a walk. And that'll wrap it up for pretty much everything that week. DECA, though DECA had a international meet, well, more of a conference for us, 
Uh, we had two students that participated in the Thrive Leadership Workshop. Um, some of you that don't know, like I do, as far as being in DECA, that kind of sets them up to be able to run for something in the state office, whether it's the state of Missouri president, secretary, anything like that, which is a huge honor to be. So, and they're underclassmen, so obviously got the chance next year at the big state election. And then, Charlie, there was some sort of Olympics today. I thought you wanted to fill the people in on what happened. Uh, yeah, today we got to do the Act Club Olympics, and um, it's just a pretty fun little thing we do an hour at the end of the day. Instead of an assembly, uh, it's like just a bunch of games. We had some cornhole, some uh, frisbee, and some just some games like that. And Mr. Paragi took fir or knocked the band out of first place this year and took first out of the Act Club Olympics. So. Do the teachers kind of have a little rivalry going on with this? Yeah, there was definitely some strategizing going on in the sixth hour with Mr. Paragi, So Yeah, this has happened back whenever I was up here working up here at the high school. Uh, there's some strategy. There's some hijinks. Cheating? I didn't say that. Ah, I, that's another word for cheating. But uh, there's there's some people that want to win, and that's not. I mean, this was after Coach Van Leer even, so you're talking about cheating in some kind of a PE game or something. Ah, the Belichicks, huh? The Belichicks. Yeah, so, uh, Charlie, before you go anywhere, let me hit your music, and let's go to Charlie's Corner. Charlie, who did you catch up with this week? This week, I interviewed the girls 4x1 Throwers Relay that competed at Herman and took third on Tuesday. Well, I got to catch the back end of that interview. Uh, seemed a little nervous. Let's, uh, let's go see what they had to say. This is Charlie Myron. I'm here with the girls 4x1 Throwers Relay team, Aubrey Harris, Jenna Darren, and Alibra Robinson. And unfortunately, Molly Pritchard couldn't be here with us today due to scheduling conflict. How are you guys doing today? We're doing good. Huh? You're pretty good. I'm doing pretty good. All right. So, how'd the relay go? Well, we got third out of, I think, either 15 or 16 teams. So, it was pretty good. It went pretty legit. Yeah. It was good. It was pretty long, though. All right. So, how'd, how'd you guys like the throws relay? I love being in the Thor's Relay. Um, I like it because I used to be a runner and it kind of gives me an opportunity to like run again without like pressure, so it's pretty nice. I enjoyed it, but this past one, it was a little chilly. So you guys are throwers, or we're in the Thrower's Relay. So what throwing MS do you guys do? Um, all of three of us throw javelin. That's the only throw that we do. <laughs> I've done shot put a few times, but Javelin's our favorite, and I think that's why we bonded. Then Molly's not here, so I'll answer for her. Um, she does all three throws, discus shot and jab, and yeah. All right, and do any of you guys do other events, or you just focus on throwing? I do long jump. I've been thrown into a few other events, like the 400 and the 100s. Last year I did the 800s. Well, I used to be a distance runner, but now I just throw javelin and whatever else they put me in, pretty much. So what is your favorite part of throwing? I like thinking about the mechanics of it and like watching like the physics and everything of it. I like knowing how the things work. Um, I kind of, honestly, it kind of pulled me out of a dark time a couple years ago around COVID time. So it's really just a relaxing outlet for me and I really enjoy it and it's pr and I've become more serious about it but I like it because I can do it whenever and just kind of enjoy the process of learning everything. I enjoy throwing because the people that do it are also very enjoy enjoying to be around um, and just it's very satisfying to watch when other people actually take it seriously. So what has been your favorite part of the season so far? Any memories or anything that you want to share? Um, well, I started throwing a little bit late. So 
being able to PR in my only in my second meet and getting pretty close to um, the other throwers, that was a really good memory for me. Um, hmm. It's been a pretty short season because a lot of our meets have been canceled because of rain. But my favorite meet was the one whenever I missed my PR by one inch. <laughs> one inch. Um, I've enjoyed the last two meets because I PR'd in both, even though the last time I only PR'd by 0.02 of a meter. <laughs> but it's still up there. Alright, and conference is coming up on Monday, and I'm pretty excited. How are you guys feeling about it? Um, I don't know if I'm exactly excited about it, because I've been thrown into varsity for some reason. But, I mean, meets are always fun. It's going to be an all-day one, so it'll be fun. Yeah, and especially get to out of school. Yeah. Um, I'm looking forward to it because, co like, conference is, like, the last, like, m not relaxing, but, like, the, less, the least pressurizing meet that we have left, especially since I'm a senior. And it's an all-day thing. It's a really good bonding experience, so I'm looking forward to it. Um, I am excited for it to be my first conference because I'm a freshman, but a little nervous about it being a whole day. And so, what events are you going to conference for? I'm doing long jump and javelin. I'm going for just javelin, which is nice because I have all day and a, like, a good break so I can like really just focus on my throws. I'm also going for just javelin and exactly what Aubrey said. Alright, and Aubrey, you are a senior and you are going to college next year for Jav, so tell us a little about that. Um, so I really wasn't planning on going to college for a sport, and then going into my junior year, I was introduced to JAV, which is pretty late for throwers, um, but it was like, I really liked it, I learned the technique over the summer and have been tweaking it since then, um, and I'm going D3 for Javelin, which is a non-scholarship, a non-athletic scholarship thing, um, and I chose D3 because it gives me um, more of an opportunity to focus on my school first because that's what I'm going to college for is to get a degree. So track is basically more of just like a extracurricular for me, but I really like it. So I'm looking forward to meeting a lot of people there. All right. I think that's going to wrap up this interview. Thank you guys for being here and good luck at conference. All right, Charlie, another great segment like always. Now it's time for, I think we know what it's time for. Performance. Uh, we talked a little bit about performance of the week this week. We kind of talked about revamping a little bit. Maybe have a new uh, assignment for Mr. Thompson coming up for season two. If we get there, uh, we won't say anything about it yet because we got to ask him. But it could be a pretty fun idea. Uh, moving into performance of the week. Charlie, why don't you take it away and give us your performance of the week. Yeah, I'm going to continue giving love to the throwers this week. I'm going to go with Molly Pritchard. She plays second out of 28 in the shot put, throwing 10.35 meters. She also competed in disc and ran the 4x1. And, I mean, she's just an all-around athlete. She plays softball and basketball, too, and it's definitely fun to be around her when we're throwing in the pits and stuff. So. Yeah, Charlie's not biased to the throwers. You wouldn't think. No, I, no he, he's not biased at all yeah. towards the throwers. Molly is pretty awesome. Yeah, though. Molly deserves it. I'll jump in number two. Um, I'm going back to Riverbend for my performance of the week. Last night, this young lady took first in the mile, first in the 800, and in her 4x4. Four four. Um, she and her teammates took second. I had her. Um, in PE last year, she's in athletic development this year and very, very competitive on the track. Um, cross country, the same thing. Wonderful kid, great student, very nice, nice individual, Grace Dreyer. So congrats, Dre Grace. Last night, I believe she ran under six minutes, and that's a pretty good time for a middle school kid, Charlie, especially a girl. Yeah, I mean, we got really no distance runners this year, so we're definitely excited to have her up there next year. Yeah, yeah, I believe that was what was reported was she broke six on the – that might not have been uh, last night's meet. That might have been the meet prior. Last week, maybe. Yeah, but it's still a pretty impressive yeah. time. Congrats, Grace. I could run one lap in maybe six minutes, <laughs> and it would be close. That's if I don't have to call the paramedics. 
Uh, my performance of the week this week, I will take uh, the perfect game, Jake Collier, nine up, nine down, nine Ks, 45 pitches, just in and out, let's go home. Yeah, I'm glad they didn't charge admission for the uh, parents for that uh, game. For as, a fr- as a freshman, too, he was ready to go. Uh, dealt with a little bit of not really even having a bullpen. We had to make some sort of adjustments there. Uh, but, yeah, he was ready to go, fired it up there early, and showed Bishop DeBerg a fastball, and that was pretty much it. When the parents were setting up their, their lawn chairs behind the home plate for DeBerg, I saw a few faces when he started warming up, and I think they knew what was about to happen. Yeah, it was a tough one for uh, Bishop DeBerg, but good on our end. Um, before we get out of here, though, we do have a guest this week. We are joined with school board president Matt Trower. It's a very fun interview, so stick around. We're back, joined in studio with our guest this week, school board president Matt Trower. Thank you for joining us today. Yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks for the invite, guys. Uh, been listening to your podcasts over the last several weeks and uh they're entertaining to say the least and uh appreciate you guys uh thinking about me uh to join you yeah and also just so everybody knows coach brown is here i know people like it whenever he's in on the interviews with us yeah I, i'll date myself with mr trower too um i think i started teaching mm-hmm. when he was in high school and um i was freshman coach i guess with his football group that won a district title am i correct uh that yep that's correct uh you're a quarterback i was uh the quarterback of the 95 team uh we did win districts yeah and then this guy and i have uh played a lot of slow pitch softball (laughs) together through the years and you know we're we're real familiar with him and uh he's good friends with my brother mark and Glad to have you aboard today, Matt. Yeah, appreciate it. Uh, I don't uh, get around the bases as, as good as I used to, so uh, that <laughs> slow-pitch softball stuff's uh, a thing of the past for uh, me. Me neither. I don't either. <laughs> oh, before we uh, jump in, we usually like to hit on the PHS alumni thing, which you are. Uh, is there a little bit you want to tell us about yourself and your family? Yeah, so, uh, you know, my wife is a teacher uh, in the district. She teaches at Zitzman Elementary. I've got two kids. Um, both in district. My daughter's a sophomore. She's at uh, the high school, obviously. And then uh, my son is in sixth grade at Pacific Intermediate. So, um, yeah, I was a 1996 graduate, and um, that's kind of where we're at today. Baseball, football, anything else you do in high school? Uh, (laughs) That's a funny, funny question. So, yeah, I played baseball and football. I also wrestled my freshman year. Oh, I don't remember that. And, well, I didn't wrestle prior to that. And <laughs> I told my dad, I said, you know, I really like this football gig. I said, I I want to do something in the off season, make sure I stay in shape. And uh, <laughs> I, I got about three days into practice of, of getting worked over a little bit by kids who had wrestled for 10, 12 years, whatever. And uh, I remember sitting at uh, the dinner table and looking up at my dad, and I said, you know, I, I think this was the worst decision of my life. <laughs> so you were good at staring at the lights. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yes. It was uh, – I would walk into the, the wrestling room, and uh, I would wrestle against guys like Floyd Blake and Keith Orris, and uh, they would line up uh, to, to make sure they were partn- partnered up with me for the day. So it was uh, not a great experience. But, yeah, I, I did that for a little bit. Well, I share your pain. I had a wrestling gig back in sixth grade. My dad made me wrestle, and I about wanted to throw up at the tournament. I wasn't very good either, but that's that's a good story. Yep. Uh, what uh, with, with your background, and, you know, I know you're outgoing and involved and, and uh, have a lot of leadership characteristics, but specifically what – was it the click that made you want to run for school board? Yeah, so, um, you know, I've always had um, a passion for the district, and, and all of that sort of culminated uh, with what we talked about there, right? The, the, the baseball, the football, and that sort of thing uh, whenever I was in high school. And, you know, even, even since I've been on the board, I, you know, some of the data that we see for athletes and, and how much better they do at uh, attendance, grades, um, discipline, all of those sorts of things, I think it just sort of uh, exemplifies sort of how I felt uh, and and the connection that that athletics made from for me to the district. And, um, you know, I wanted to find a way to to give back to the district. Um, Whenever I was growing up, I always wanted to be a a coach, a high school coach. And, uh, 
you know, that path didn't work out. I went into to business and uh, I wouldn't change any of that for the world. But I, as I as I grew older, I thought, you know, how can I how can I still tap into that? How can I still um, have an, uh, an opportunity to give back to to the district that I, I you know, attached myself to growing up? And uh, the school board was really that avenue. Um, you know, I've got, again, a wife who's a teacher. I've got two kids in the district. And, um, you know, I thought with them and, and being able to make a difference for them and the district um, that it was the choice for me. Now, I don't know how long I'll be on for school board. My kids, uh, my, like I said, my son's in sixth grade. I would say after he's finished uh, with school, I'll pass it off to somebody else who has kids in school. Yeah, that was one of the follow-up questions I was going to have, but you answered it right there. Yep. We kind of talked about this a little bit with the interview with Andy Herbst, because, you know, your time kind of crossed over with his tail end of his athletic director. Uh, there's been a lot of significant changes since you've been in office, a lot of upgrades across the district. And, you know, yeah, we talk sports facilities, but there's been numerous other things, too. Um, how does it feel to be a part of, you know, kind of behind the scenes of all these upgrades? Well, you know, it's it you know it's really a team effort right so you've got sort of that central office cog that's part of this team but it's also the board right so there's seven of us on the board that that get together and make all of these decisions and and really look to see what's best for the future of the district and um you know some of the things that we've done since i've been on there have have um have been innovative to say the least um we've done some upgrades to the athletic facilities one of them uh, the football field turfing. So that was that was really an easy decision for the board. The money was there. It was voted on by the um, by the voters in 2010. Uh, we just followed through on that commitment and made it happen. So um, that piece, you know, I, I don't take too much credit for, other than to say um, we said it's time to push forward with this. And then um, obviously the weight room has had significant upgrades, and I think that's sort of. Um, you know, it falls back into that whole athlete approach and making sure that we're providing opportunities for each of our sports to compete at a high level. Um, and then, you know, th those are just the athletic program uh, highlights. We've also, we've, we've added trimesters, um, which is, uh, you know, extremely innovative. Um, we're one of the few, if not the only, <laughs> Uh, school in the state that's doing uh, trimesters currently. Um, we also redistricted our elementary boundaries. We restructured our middle school program. Um, you know, we've we've really um, not been scared of innovation um, since I've been on the board. And, you know, I, I'm appreciative for that because that's really um, sort of my mindset is let's get out there and not be afraid to fail forward. And uh, I think we've done a good job of that, and, and we haven't had too much failure in that process. Yeah, my um, cl experience with taking classes with Doc Hillhouse, and um, throw his name out there, another legendary guy yep. for this community, he always said, you know, the majority of the community, they're, they're going to have the first experience possibly on a Friday night at the football field. They're going to have it in the gymnasium or maybe in the theater. And he goes, you know, after, after their, the elementary school process, that's what they're going to see. And I think we check the box in all those areas for our upgrades. So that, that, stuff's, that stuff's been awesome. Yep, for sure. And, you know, just you know, talking about the Friday nights or, um, or in the, the, um, the auditorium, you know, those things, when we're competitive in, in those areas, it just builds that community, um, that community relationship between the school and the community and really uh, drives um, kids to want to be a part of more than just, you know, having to show up for school. So I, I really think, you know, having successful athletic programs, successful uh, activity programs, I think all of that sort of leads to this culture um, of success in more areas than just uh, on the playing field. Yeah, like, I mean, the guys that you're coaching, and we might come to that later, but that group of sixth grade kids, they, you can tell they just want to be Indians. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so, and, uh, I, you know, I don't want to jump too far into that. I know we're probably going to talk about that in a little bit, but, uh, you know, those guys, they've got uh, they've got a special compete, and um, it's – it's uh, it's not just the kids; it's the parents, it's the coaches, and and all of that. But uh, we'll we'll get into that in a minute. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Well, 
just kind of piggybacking off that a little bit, but in a little different direction um, from from where you sit in your leadership. When when you're in a search for a leadership spot, such as a teacher, um, uh, maybe a coach, maybe a head coach, maybe an administrator, um, when, when you keep it in the mind of the district and what's best for us as a whole, what what specific qualities are instrumental in, in, in your opinion in, in those big leadership roles in our district? Well, um, so I, this is going to be a letdown for you guys, this answer, but uh, we really, as a board, we only hire one person and that's the superintendent. So for us, it's really critical to make sure that hire is, you know, top notch. It really uh, sets the tone for the district. So we have to see the qualities that we want in that person. And, um, you know, we have to have the faith in them that they're going to go out and build that leadership team uh, across the district so that uh, all of the things that the board wants to see, all of the direction that the board wants to go, all of that happens uh, because of the leadership that our superintendent does. And um, we recently hired a new superintendent with Dr. Kerry Swearjohn. And, uh, you know, we couldn't be more happy with that hire. And I think I think she really um, exemplifies the, the leadership skills and uh, the leadership uh, that we're looking for as a board. Yeah, we were just talking about the new hire, Dr. Swearjohn. She was over this whenever this started. So she yeah. allows us to do what we're doing here on Pacific Indians Chatter, which is great. Uh, knowing a little bit about your youth coaching success, do you feel that athletes should continue to play multiple sports while growing up, or is there more leaning towards that specialization process? Especially with you, you've got to go through it a little more recently than yeah. some others. Have you seen the more specialization? or? Yeah, so, um, you know, I, I'll give you my philosophy, and, and this is for um, kids prior to high school, right? And, and I'll even talk, you know, as they enter high school, but you guys are obviously the experts there. But... For me, I I think kids are kids, right? And we, we you got to let them go out, and they have to enjoy it. So, um, for me, I am I could not be more against specialization. I think special uh, special yeah, specialization just leads to um, additional injury from fatigue, and it also leads to mental fatigue. So you see kids that you know they're competing at a high level. They're focused on one sport. They're playing game after game after game before they get to high school or, or even college, and um, they get tired of it. Right. So I think it's important to let them be kids. Let them go out, have fun, and um, if they're athletes, they're going to get to where they're supposed to be anyway. Let them go out, be athletes, become more athletic. Um, and then whenever they get older, if, if there's a special circumstance, they're a special kid and uh, they've got an opportunity to do something special with a specific sport, then yeah, absolutely. Uh, then maybe at that point they look to specialize, but um, that's not till later. And, um, you know, I, I don't know what your thoughts are on, on it, Scott, but I think even later, I think it's good for them to, to play multiple sports. Yeah, I'm, I'm in agreement with you. I think Cody is too. And, you know, just... We still today, the memories that we built as kids playing with our buddies and all the different things that we did, we still laugh and talk about that today because obviously none of us are making millions of dollars playing sports anymore. Right. So the average kid's not going to get to that level, but the lessons that you learn with the different coaches and the different teammates and the different situations, you get just more and more of those with if you play multiple sports. Yeah, and you brought up a good point about playing with your friends. And, you know, that's exactly right. I, I can tell you a thousand stories from playing. Uh, when I was a kid, I played with Coach King. And, uh, you know, it's it. I played with, got a chance to play with my friends all through baseball and, you know, with, with all of the clubs and all of that sort of thing. Kids don't get that opportunity as much anymore. And yeah, I know they're built, they're creating other relationships and that, but there's something special about, um, you know, playing with people from your community and uh, being able to do that. Yeah. And then uh, speaking of community. Yeah. You have uh, a new business in town and we'll give you a little plug here that seems to be off and running how did uh, you get the idea for up as we'll call it and it seems like you are going to be a busy busy man in the next uh, several years yeah I, you know i i guess i'm a glutton for punishment or i'm uh maybe i'm a glutton to punish my wife because 
she's been uh, she's been down there helping quite a bit too. So special shout out to her and uh, and all of her support through the process. Um, but you know how how did this idea occur, right? So you know we're out in Franklin County and. Um, I drive my son in and my daughter when she was doing soccer stuff, but I was have been driving my son in to take um, baseball lessons, right? So uh, we're in there and, and there's a kid next to us uh, getting lessons from a different coach. And uh, I see he's got a shirt on from Sullivan and I'm thinking, my gosh, I mean, that's got to be an hour and 15, hour and 30 minute one way drive for these guys to take lessons and and i just i'm I've, i'm like there's got to be there's got to be a market out there for this right so so that was really the driver is i you know i we're along 44 i feel like you know with union and st Clair and pacific and uh sullivan there's there's an opportunity for us to deliver high level instruction um with premier technology uh for for kids in the area and and that was really the driver now why why was i there you know why why am i taking my kid there well it's easy right so your kid's playing on a summer league team and either a you see him struggling one day and you're like man we've got to do something to help him out and and that's the answer right so um or or they're they're struggling for a full season okay we've really got to do something hard in the off off season to get them better or maybe they're doing really well and you're thinking, hey, we might have something here, right? So maybe maybe this is our opportunity for him to really get to the next level. Um, so, you know, we're really there for any of those scenarios, right? So kids can be anywhere along the line and, and still have a need to get better. But for me, it always went back to, I could tell my son this, the same thing on the way to the lesson. I could tell him, this is what you probably need to work on tonight. He'd be like, okay, dad, that's enough. I, I, I don't need to hear it anymore. And then we'd get there and the instructor would tell him the exact same thing. And we'd be driving home. He'd be like, dad, I need to work on this. <laughs> and I'm like, that's the best money I ever spent in my life. <laughs> my, my kids aren't there yet, but they're, I, they'll get there. I, right. I hear you 100% on that one. But yeah, the facility down there, it's awesome. Jameson has been in there a couple of times. And Maddie's come. She's like, I want to go down to the cages. I want to I watch them hit. And you know, it's it's a great thing for the community. It's it's been needed. It's it's a need we've had, and you know, it's something that checks a box. It also might bring in, you know, people to our community also and help us grow in other ways when we have opportunities like that for, for yeah our kids. Yeah, for sure. And just uh, just a couple of the other things that that I've thought about over the years and that we've done with our team. I know you talked about our our guys are successful. And, and I can tell you, I can I can think back to when we were in T-ball or when we were doing our first year of basketball, but we had ladders out there. We're doing agility drills. Like we're, we were always had this long-term vision, right? And I think, I think a lot of teams don't really think about that. They just think about, well, let's focus on the baseball skills or the basketball skills or whatever the sport is at the time. And, and that's really why we're doing the speed and agility stuff, the strength and conditioning stuff, all of that sort of thing, because it, it creates that whole athlete, right? So your your kid might play two or three sports and you get you get that in in one session, then all of a sudden they're growing in all three sports, right? You're, it's it's really contributing to them becoming a just a better overall athlete. So um, that's really that's really the big piece we've been focused on recently. Yeah, you know, like this year in season one, you get the free plug. Next year, if there is a season two, <laughs> uh, we will be looking for advertisement sponsors. So, does that mean I'll be on the jingle in the front? The Ooh, dinner, 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 dinner. wherever you want, we can put you <laughs> we in can there. Jingle you anywhere you want, Mister yeah, well, John. We can, we can put you in anywhere. Um, before we wrap up, I had one that sort of came up. We were talking about community, so I'll go off script a little bit here. Uh, what do you think the relationship should be between the school board, Merrimack Valley, and say like the city government too? Because yep. we were talking about like these feeder systems and we mm -hmm. got city parks, facilities, soccer, Liberty Field. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think there with like building a relationship or is it a very vital thing to kind of keep sports moving in the right direction in this town? Yeah, so, um, you know, I, I don't know if I want to limit this just to sports, but I think there's, there's it's healthy for um, the school board and um, the aldermen and mayor to have uh, a good relationship, right? So, and, you know, 
I there haven't there hasn't been a ton of interaction between the two. I talked to Alderman, I talked to the mayor. Like I I have those conversations independently, but um, it's it's been pretty rare that um, we've had sort of um, visionary conversations or anything like that. And, and that's to no fault of theirs or ours or any of that. It's just something that hasn't occurred. Um, you know, it it. Uh, I'd say there, you know, as as long as we're all on the same page, we have the same goals. I think, I think that's healthy for the community as a whole. I think their success creates our success, and vice versa. Well said. I, I just got one more question. Uh oh, this one's <laughs> this one's gonna throw you for a loop. Uh oh. <laughs> have you learned to eat pizza with your hands? <laughs> So, uh, <laughs> uh, so most people probably have no idea what you're talking about. No, they probably don't. Uh, so I, I don't eat anything with my, well, I'll eat a sandwich sometimes with my hands, but that's about it. Otherwise I'm a fork and knife guy all the time. So I was like, uh, I was a uh, food, uh, I don't know, virus uh, 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 a phobic before it was a thing. I guess before COVID came along, I was already pre-trained. I I don't like to eat with my hands anything. No, that's it's impressive. You should. I've always been impressed. I'm like, <laughs> he, he doesn't even. I don't give the pizza a chance, but this guy, he's a fork and knife guy with yeah. his pizza. It's it's been incredible. Well, I'm so. surprised you pulled up the pizza because most people point to chicken wings because I can peel a wing off pretty good with a fork and knife. It's funny. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the uh, hard hitting journalism question from. <laughs> Scott Brown over here. Uh, Honestly, I, I'm glad that's where you went with it. So. Okay. <laughs> uh, I, yeah, let's keep it PG. So. Yeah. Um, I'd like to thank you for joining us again. I uh, really, really appreciate you stopping by and making time with your busy schedule down there at Up. That's another free plug. They're going to run out. <laughs> Yeah, thanks, Matt, for all you do for the, the district and the community. We really appreciate you. Yep, absolutely. And, and again, just to go back to the beginning, you know, you guys, this this thing's awesome. Um, you guys have obviously some killer guests on here, so sorry to bring it down for a week. <laughs> no, you didn't bring it and, down. Uh, and I can't wait to see who you guys have on uh, coming forward. Uh, thank you again for joining us. That'll wrap it up. And until next week, everybody, please keep up the chatter.